Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving a Diophantine equation. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, also comment and subscribe, and let's get started. So we do have this Diophantine equation, 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to 1 over z. We're looking for positive integer solutions. Remember we had a video on Diophantine equations and systems before. There are methods like Diophantine equations can be solved uh, with modular arithmetic, you can use factoring, and a couple other techniques. And this problem is actually pretty interesting uh, for the method that we use to solve it. So let's go ahead and isolate 1 over z first. And uh, we're going to make a common denominator, x plus y over x, y. And then let's go ahead and flip this over, and we get z in terms of x and y. And that is x, y over x plus y. Now, here, we're going to be using some divisibility criteria. Okay? In other words, the greatest common divisor of two numbers. So for that purpose, let's go ahead and define the greatest common divisor of x and y as d, such that d basically divides x and y, and there's nothing larger than that, uh, which divides x and y, which means that x is a multiple of d, so I can write it as x equals dm, and y is a multiple of d, I can write it as dn, where m and n are integers, or as well as relatively prime. Okay, so m and n need to be relatively prime because d is the largest number that divides them. So once you divide, so think of a fraction like 12 over 15, you divide both numbers by 3 and you get 4 fifths, and that can't be simplified anymore because 4 and 5 are relatively prime. Okay, good way to think about it. So, this is an important statement. Now, we have two numbers that are relatively prime. And as you know, relatively prime numbers play an important role in number theory, but especially for this problem, they give us a really good result. So, what does this mean? If the greatest common divisor of two numbers is one, this actually implies, and if you look at this, you kind of see the product divided by sum. So I can safely say that this implies that the greatest common divisor of mn and m plus n is also one. Now, why is this true? You can easily check this, verify this, prove it, but just think about it. If these two numbers had a common factor, then it would have to, you know, divide both of these numbers, let's say g, g divides mn, so g either divides m or g either divides n. But if g divides m plus n and g divides m, then it has to, it needs to divide n as well, but g is different from 1, so you get kind of like a contradiction, whatever. You can prove it, it's not too hard. So this is our conclusion here that this needs to be 1. How's that, how does that help? Well, now we're going to go ahead and substitute these into our problem. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. Okay, this is going to give us something very interesting. So now I will replace x with dm and y with dn. Uh, so I'll be getting something like d times the quantity m plus n. Obviously, one of the d's is going to cancel out and we're going to get something simpler. So now let's go ahead and write this down, rewrite it actually. So I'm going to write it as dmn divided by m plus n. Now think about this, m plus n and mn are relatively prime. So there is no way m plus n is going to divide mn. But z is an integer, therefore dmn divided by m plus n needs to be an integer, which means that d has to be divisible by m plus n. Does that make sense? Otherwise, we're not going to get an integer from here. Therefore, we can safely say that m plus n divides d. What is that supposed to mean? Think about it for a minute. Well, m plus n divides d means d is a multiple of m plus n. And I can write it as d equals m plus n multiply by a positive integer k. Now, how does this help us? Well, we do have two equations for x and y, remember? We said that x equals dm and y equals dn. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and use this. Remember, x equals dm, if you replace d with this, you get something like m plus n k multiplied by m, which is m plus n times km. Or if you want, you can write it as km plus or km times m plus n. So this is x. And we can do pretty much the same thing for y. y is the equal to dn, and d is equal to this. So we can just write it as, you know, kn multiplied by m plus n. Okay, cool. So now we got the values for x and y in terms of m and n and k, 
But we didn't do the same thing for z, because notice that z is written in terms of mn and d, but we want to get rid of d, okay? Because d is just the, the greatest common divisor. So let's go ahead and write z like x and y. So we can do that basically, right? z was dmn divided by m plus n. And remember, our uh, starting point was that m plus n divides d, so d is a multiple. So if you go ahead and replace d with what it is from here, so you can just write m plus n times k for d, and then multiply that by mn, and then divide it by m plus n. And what is that gonna give you? Well, the m plus n is gonna cancel out, and you're gonna get z equals k m n from here. Awesome. So now if you put it all together, basically we're gonna be getting our solutions as an ordered triple. Let's go ahead and write it down as an ordered triple. So x, y, z is going to equal k m times m plus n, comma k n times m plus n, comma k m n. And m and n and k are all positive integers. All right, so basically, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. But before that, I have an announcement to make. Looks like the algebra problems, the number theory problems, the trigonometry problems are much more popular than geometry puzzles. For that reason, I'll be doing more of these and less of the geometry puzzles, but I'll try to give you guys some high quality puzzles because I'll be working on them in the meantime. Just wanted to let you know, see you tomorrow with another problem. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.